so thank you for attending today. I am Corey Laparty, the co-presenter for this session, Perfect Partners, Public Image and Membership. With me today is Katie Cord, the District 5020 Public Image Chair. And uh, you'll be hearing from both of us on and off throughout this session. So the role of public image and membership is all about positive attraction. By working together, you can make your club more attractive. This means working on your club's image and brand by sharing the good you're working uh, and doing in the community. By creating positive attraction through the efforts of membership and PI, we attract the right people who embody the rotary values of community development, networking, friendship, and service above self. That's the power of connecting your membership and public image. And we will cover how you can improve your club's brand and image and increase and maintain membership. So why is it important that we are talking about creating a positive image and brand in our communities to attract and keep the right people? Well, in general, Rotary's membership stats show that over the last 15 years, worldwide membership is flat. Every year, 100,000 people join Rotary and 100,000 people leave Rotary. Uh, those that are leaving are leaving because their experience is not meeting their expectations. And when they leave, they often have a negative feeling about Rotary. This creates a negative public image of Rotary. Now there is a brand crisis that is affecting our membership. People don't know what we do or the impact we make in our communities and for people around the world. The current perception of Rotary is not who Rotarians actually are. It's not what we do. This is why we need to work on positive attraction, improving our club's image and brand to attract people for the right reasons. A strong brand drives membership, drives giving, attracts partners, and enhances our members' Rotary experience. A strong Rotary image equals a strong Rotary club. To change the public's perception of our brand and increase membership, we need to change how we speak about Rotary. The power to create your Rotary story to change your brand and attract new members is in your hands. The key things we can do is to tell your Rotary story. We need to be able to deliver Rotary's overall value proposition, which is that Rotary joins leaders, exchanges ideas, and takes action. These values should be unified across all your public image areas, including your website, social media, promo material, etc. The next thing to do is to protect, promote, and deliver on Rotary's brand in all our interactions to help strengthen Rotary's image and our ability to engage the public and our members. This means that we are delivering a clear and cohesive message about Rotary and people begin to understand the Rotary. And third is for us to become Rotary brand ambassadors, which involves sharing our stories about Rotary to others and not waiting for someone to ask, what is Rotary? So your club's brand image starts with you. Rotary isn't just a club you belong to, it's who you are in your community, your job and everyday life. We need to be Rotary when we're online. It is right now our only chance to make a good impression and tell our Rotary stories. Right now the world needs positive stories about Rotarians making a difference in their communities. Remember, you are your club's image and we are Rotary. Now, the more we share positive Rotary stories, the more the old male, pale, stale image will disappear as true Rotary stories get out there and not the stereotypical ones. Over the rest of today's session, we're going to look at some areas where you can change and adapt your club's brand in order to promote and maintain membership. So I know Corey mentioned quite a bit the word brand. Um, so I kind of want to go into a bit more detail about what that is. Um, a brand isn't a logo, it's not an identity, um, it's not a product. A brand is someone's feeling about a product, a service or an organisation. So products are never just products. Interacting with these products provides experiences and we buy them based with that experience in mind. So put simply, a brand is what somebody thinks of when he or she hears your brand name. So it's everything the public thinks it knows about your brand, both factual and emotional. So basically your brand name exists objectively. People can see your brand name, but your brand itself exists in someone's mind. 
it's a bit abstract, but it is important. And I'm going to give you an example to kind of reiterate what I mean. So Starbucks, everyone who recognizes that brand, like I said, the brand name exists objectively. You can see it. You can see the logo, you know, it's Starbucks, but the Starbucks brand itself is objective. It's, um, it's subjected to your experiences. So it's based whether you see that Starbucks brand and you think, wow, I get some really great coffee from Starbucks. It's amazing. I love it. Or you think of it, look at it and think, ah, oh, that coffee is just not worth the money. It's overpriced. I hate Starbucks coffee. That brand perception has been built on your experiences with the brand. And therefore your brand, um, your idea of Starbucks' is brand is different. Everyone has different experiences. And this is the same with Rotary Clubs. Um, we need to work on people's brand um, experiences with us. And we want them to look at our club logos and have a good brand experience. So to help you create that positive attraction, I want you to think about your club's brand. How do you want to be seen by your community? by potential members or even current members. How do you attract the right kind of member? Someone who believes in the same values as your club. So once you know your club's brand and values, it'll really help you to promote your club with those values in mind. The idea is controlling your club's brand and people's impression of your club. Ultimately, by knowing how you want your club to be seen, you can work on making sure it happens. Think of it as, what do we want people to think about our clubs? What do we want our club brand experience to be when people see our logo? So let's look at an example of a Rotary Club. This is the Rotary Club of Irvine. Um, they took the time to think about their club brand and how they could show um, this uh, through public image to, to, to attract and maintain more members. So here are their brand goals. They want to be fun and friendly, a sense of humor, diversity of people, so age and gender, diversity of projects, so a project for everyone, and then families are welcome to so bring your kids, parents, grandparents, goldfish, whatever. So this is how they wished to be thought of when people saw the Rotary Club of Urban logo around the town. These don't have to be your club's brand goals, every club is different, but you see the idea. And then in all their marketing materials, they ensured that these brand goals were clear to see. And we have an example here. This is the flyer they produced. And if we look on the top right, we see diversity of projects. They're showcasing all the different projects they do. In the images they use, so in the top left and bottom right, we see children present. We see welcoming, fun, engaging photos. And they're really reiterating all those brand goals. And on the bottom, um, left, it might not be clear to see, but they have statistics of how many years of service, how many people they've helped. Again, they're showing that they have diversity of projects and they're out there. So it's a quick glimpse into how, if you think of your club's brand goals, you can really implement them um, into your um, promotional materials in order to attract membership. The next thing, if you work on your club brand goals, you really need to think about the logo. Our logo isn't our brand, as I said, but it is vital to our brand. So it really distinguishes you from the competition. So we want to be known for all the good work we as Rotarians are doing around the world. And the logo is the stepping stool, the prompter, to kind of help people think about your brand. So whatever your club's brand is, it does start with the logo. Since um, Rotary's inception 115 years ago, um, the Rotary Wheel kind of has generated an untold amount of goodwill from people who have seen it displayed in connection with Rotary projects. Um, the will is kind of a really simple visual representation of what we've achieved and what we can achieve. So it's very important that you use the correct logo. Now this is a logo you should not be using. Don't use it. Don't even think about use it. Don't let it cross your mind. We all have really important role to play in being custodians of the Rotary brand. Um, in today's world, people are bombarded with thousands of advertising messages. So it's vital that we as Rotary Clubs and Rotary as a whole have a consistent, high quality visual representation of our brand, kind of cut through the noise. As a Rotary Club, when you apply your brand correctly and consistently across all channels, you really ensure that your projects are recognized at Rotary at a glance. You'll be able to tap into that hard won goodwill and you're gonna look professional. If you're still using the old logo, you really stand to miss out.
the great news is it's really easy to create the new logo. You can go on the Rotary Brand Center and you can create your personal club logo really simply. So I really recommend if you're going to work on your club brand, um, think of your brand goals, but also focus on making sure you're using the correct logo. So look at online platforms, update websites, social media, email signatures, newsletters, flyers, brochures, t-shirts, banners, you name it. Make sure you have the correct logo. As diverse as we are as clubs, collectively, we're all connected. And with all of us displaying the same will, the same logo, we can ensure that every Rotary project really benefits from the achievements of every other. So let's take pride in the way we display our brand and make sure that we are using the correct logo because it's very important that we do. All right, um, I don't know if any, it's a time for questions. Um, if you have a question, you can raise your hand and I'll unmute you or you can write it in the chat. The correct logo is these. This is the correct logo. You have the will, and then you have Rotary and the Will. Every club should be using these. You can create one that says Rotary Club of. Yeah, so here we can see Irving Rotary's logo here. So you can choose to have your club name at the top or the bottom. This is what you should be using for your club logo. All right, we have a question. Uh, Ken Hammer, I'm gonna unmute you if you wanna say your question. Yeah, thanks, Katie. Uh, I'm just curious if Rotary or our district has done some research on our brand recognition. Uh, what are people saying about our brand? Yeah, actually, uh, there has been research. Uh, basically, uh, a third of people haven't heard of Rotary at all. 60% uh, of people, or somewhere between 60 and 75, have heard of Rotary. Uh, but uh, about 20% of people actually know Rotary's program uh, and what we do. So as far as a brand's gone, uh, since 2012, when Rotary has really been making an effort to change the branding and the logo, uh, they've made a difference. They've gone from like 60-ish percent brand recognition to about 75, but that brand recognition really is only in the logo and not in an understanding of what we do as Rotarians. Thank you. I was just wondering, maybe the district could uh, assist clubs in uh, trying to find a simple way to assess their local brand recognition uh, within their community. Could be just some three simple questions we all ask or a simple online survey or just some basic way that we can get some good data rather than just sort of the general, uh, you know, 33% have never heard of Rotary, et cetera, et cetera. So, it might be something we work forward uh, or move forward with in terms of helping uh, clubs understand. Uh, we have a couple of comments and a number of hands. Um, somebody asked, where did the Irvine Rotary Club publisher present their ad? So um, they were just basic um, promotional materials. So they would just hand them out at events. Um, I do have more examples of promotional materials they made. If you're interested, I can send them to you, but they were just general promotional materials. Uh, Caroline has a question. Hi, my question is, um, when did the logo, um, the branding change and why did it change? And, and should we as a club be going back and redoing some of the logos that we have out in the community? Yes. Um, so it changed what, six, seven years ago? Um, in 2012 when they started making the effort? Yeah, and it changed because they did a uh, Rotary International did a survey and they found that the old will. Can we go back to the old will quickly, Corey? Um, it wasn't recognizable enough because the rotary words weren't clear enough if you're looking at it from a distance. Mm -hmm. So, okay. what they did was they found by adding the word rotary by the will, it was far more prominent that it's rotary. So, they found this had better um, brand recognition. So, that's why they changed it. And it's been changed for a very long time. And yes, Everybody really should invest time in making sure all their signs are up to date, especially ones in the community. Rod, ask your question. Yeah, I just was wondering, we used to have a, a, a really technical guy in our club who updated our website, it was great. Now we don't have anybody that's that technical and we want to update our website. And I, I especially want to do it with all these this brand and, and, and make, our, make us look good. I'm wondering, like, do people, uh, what do you do to try and get that done? And, and like, how much money would you have to spend, do you think? And what's the best way of doing it, going to that 
place if you don't have the technical expertise in your club? Um, so um, what I've done as public image chair is uh, we actually have a section on websites coming up. Um, but I also put, do use Club Runner. Mm. Oh, yes. Um, so I put together a guide on how to make the basic brand changes on Club Runner with step by step instructions. Um, I'm more than happy to send that to everyone afterwards along with the slides. Um, if you were employing someone, um, you're probably talking about a week or two weeks worth of work if you really wanted to get it on top. But there are some really simple changes you can make that make a world of difference. And those won't take that much time. And now we're going to move on to uh, online presence. So right now people are relying on social media and websites to get their information. Uh, especially about how to join your Rotary Club and what Rotary is and what your club does. If you do not have an attractive and prominent presence online which answers these questions, you're definitely missing out on a lot of potential members and volunteers. So first we're going to look at social media and the best thing about social media is you're in control of the story that goes out. You can craft your own and your club's Rotary story to best promote your club to potential members and to engage current members. Social media gives us a lot of opportunities to share who we are and what Rotary can do for others. Now is the time to tell your club stories. Remember that potential members could always be on your page looking at your posts to get a better idea about your club. They can't visit your club right now, so online is the only method they have of reaching you. Uh, I believe that everything we do in regard to public image should be viewed as for potential members. So the following video is an example of the power of social media to boost the brand and image of your club and in turn boost membership, morale, and attract new members. What can social media do for you? Check this out. It's a true story. Meet Paul. He's a Rotarian who likes to swim. In 2012, he used social media to promote his club's Global Swim Marathon. With email, Facebook, Twitter, Skype, Google Maps, YouTube, and a blog, Paul spread the word. More than 200 clubs on six continents signed up. The big day came, February 25th. During one hour across 15 time zones, 4,546 people between 8 and 93 years old each swam 100 meters. If you're counting, that's 454 kilometers. The swim marathon raised more than $100,000 for polio eradication. It set a Guinness World Record, got headlines all over the world, and a whole bunch more people learned about Rotary. Since then, Paul's Club has inducted 16 new members. Coincidence? Social media helped Paul communicate his idea, create enthusiasm, raise money, increase membership, and spread the word about Rotary. Oh, and a year later, the club's next swim marathon was even more successful. So think about it. What can social media do for you? So as you can see, uh, social media can be very effective in uh, helping your club's brand and helping to build membership. So let's look at some quick tips to boost your Facebook presence. You wanna have an inviting cover photo. You wanna use the Rotary Mark of Excellence or the Rotary Wheel as it's called uh, as your profile pic. And you wanna make sure your about section is filled out and that you post on your page at least two times a week. If for example, your social media is inactive, it gives the impression to potential members that your club's inactive. If you have plenty of posts about meetings, projects and member highlights, potential members are going to get a much better idea about what your club does and will be more enticed to join. Don't make it hard for people to learn about your club and what you do. You also want to tell your story on Facebook. You want to share success stories, show your Rotary Club in action, uh, and you want to do it in easy to digest ways so anyone who looks at your Facebook page can see how active you are and what impact you're having. For current members, posting about your club's successes encourages them to engage and be proud of what their club does. Far more powerful than sending an email or a newsletter. And every post needs a bright, engaging photo or video caption. So let's look at some key tips to telling your Rotary story on Facebook. Tip one is avoid using Rotary words in social media posts. If you look at the post on the left, service and fellowship, 
it's not intuitive to non-Rotarians. We don't want to create a barrier with our language. We want people to understand right away that Rotary is about volunteering and friendship. The post on the right is an example of a better Rotary post. So the next tip is to make sure you have a good photo to go with your post. Photos that tell a story. So let's look at these story, uh, photos. What story do they tell? Uh, they tell a story of people who have lunch and uh, have lunch and they talk from a podium and they raise their hand at meetings. So it's a very stale story being told. Now what story do these photos? They're very different from the other set. These photos tell better Rotary stories. They can, photos can show the impact of your club's work. They can reach a wide audience outside of Rotary and they describe the lives we've changed. When telling a Rotary story, you can express more with a photo that shows action. So show the children and people who benefit from Rotary service and avoid photos that uh, present a stereotype of Rotary or people. Your photos should show the diversity of your club and your community. Now, pictures on social media and in the news newspaper need to tell a story and be appealing enough to make you stop and want to read more. Posed people shaking hands over big check presentations and smiling in front of the rotary banner just isn't really enough to catch people's attention. The pig check is focused just on dollars and not on what those dollars do. You wanna step away from the oversized check and make your fundraising story more interesting. As a donor of money, Rotary can say thank you and recognize the effort made in more creative ways. If children are involved, then present the check to them. Have people hold up the numbers to show the donation and involve the recipients of the funds, not just the managers of the organization. Children holding a sign saying thank you or hanging upside down from a playground swing are more appealing than a cliche big check shot. And if you really like the big check, then present it where the work took place. So people get a sense of the work that we do uh, and not just that we give out money. So here's some ways you can tell your Rotary story on Facebook. You can showcase who your members are. This not only makes the members feel better, but it allows potential members to relate to your club. You can sell your club through promoting your speakers and volunteer opportunities online. I'd ask you, do you hype up your meetings beforehand and showcase them afterwards? Do you use Facebook events to promote meetings and make your club look busy? Don't mention membership. You just want people to show up and take part. But don't forget to tag people and organizations in your posts. And don't forget to take action photos at your events. We way too often forget to bring out the camera when we're doing the work that we do. Now more than ever, we need to be embracing social media to tell our club stories. We need to show we are present, active, and care. So here are some suggestions for ways to do this. Still post about meetings, post about speakers, uh, and let people know that the meetings are actually happening. Just because you are meeting online doesn't mean it needs to be a secret. Provide clear details on people, how people can join. Uh, and you, know, you can be and maintain the security online without being secretive. You don't have to have a lot of upcoming projects due to COVID, but why not look back at past successes and post three or four pictures with a clear description of what you did and how you helped people and the impact it made. And look within, focus on those members. Do member appreciation posts. Be part of the community, share news that other organizations are doing. Uh, consider creating an online Facebook group for your members so they can share ideas and chat. And that can all be private on Facebook. And share the latest Rotary News stories and blog posts to keep that information coming out. Look at this example. So the clear branding in the upper left is there, the Rotary branding and Rotary Cares. Uh, it's got interesting and positive text on the post, they use hashtags in the post, and the imagery tells a story, the story of this woman and, and the child. Um, it also praises members here in the post and shows how this woman is making a difference during this time. You can look at the likes and shares on the post and even the fundraising opportunity built in where they're raising funds for Easter seals through the post. And in this example, you can also see that there's proper branding uh, on the lower left with the people of action. And uh, it's interesting and positive. They show hashtags, the shut in, not shut out. You need to make an effort 
to encourage members to interact and share and make a difference. This club in particular, the Silverdale Rotary Club, has been posting videos as well. And videos are a great way to engage on social media. So let's look at one of the latest projects in the video about it. Hi all, Stephen Bo here from your Silverdale Rotary Club. Okay, so here's what happened. We found out about a military mom and her young son who suffers from autism and another serious illness. His birthday was coming up and he was disappointed that the duck race had been canceled since he loves the ducks. Well, we decided we would put a volunteer in the duck outfit and do a, a quick drive-by greeting for his birthday. But then the word got out. And well, watch this. Thank you to everyone who participated in the birthday parade. You know, someone raised the question, why are we doing all of this for one little boy? Well, if you could have seen the faces of everyone in the cars, the tears rolling down their faces, you would know it wasn't just for one little boy. Thank you for watching. So, uh, as you can see, uh, video on social media it can be very impactful, uh, shows Rotary in a great light, uh, and follows all of the branding uh, points that uh, Katie has been pointing out today. So with that, uh, let's talk about websites, Katie. We're going to look at websites and how you can use them as a marketing tool for, um, to help your club membership. Now, I really believe that your club website is key to attracting members. And if your club is not making use of this prime online real estate, then you're really missing out. And the first thing is to make sure that your website is external facing. It's for potential members, supporters, partners, community members. It's not aimed at current members. Your website should be non-Rotarian friendly. Um, the design and layout of your website really speaks volumes about your uh, club's um, sophistication, and how professional you are. Um, people make a lot of assumptions based on first impressions of a website. So you really should aim for a clean, non-cluttered, modern looking website um, to help with those first impressions. Also your website's primary job is to tell the world about your club and the great work that you do. So it's the first place most people will check and um, when trying to find information about your group. So when a potential member visits your website, they're going to have questions and they're really hoping that your website is going to have the answers. Questions like, what is Rotary? How to get involved? How do I join? What does it cost? What does this club even do? Those kind of questions. So these should be the first things available on your website. Don't make it hard for people to find answers to these key pieces of information. So I'm going to look at some examples. Here's one website. When you see it, I want you to think about what your first impression is. So this is a website I made, but it's based on um, websites I've seen. Um, so let's have a look at this. So at the top, we have a menu. Um, I see duty roster. So as a non rotarian I might wonder what kind of duties I have to do. Um, I see mailing address. Well, I'm not going to send you a letter. So as far as I can tell, there's no way to contact this club. Um, below that, I see a picture of the beach. Beautiful. 
but it doesn't tell a story of rotary. Like Corey was saying, images are so important and you want a really strong, powerful image that tells rotary stories, one of the first things people see when they land on your website. This says nothing about what rotary, it's really um, a waste of um, really good space. Um, left hand side, um, we see outdated bulletins from 2015, a lunch menu, um, banners from 2012, photos from 2010. It looks out of date. You can probably assume the club isn't meeting anymore, maybe, or they're just not professional because they're not updating their website. Um, in the middle, it says, we meet weekly for lunch at the golf course. We enjoy fellowship service. We stand by the four-way test. In the summer, we only meet every week. Call Sally to join. Now here we're using words like fellowship, service, four-way test. And while they mean something to you as Rotarians, they don't have the same connotations to non-Rotarians. So we really need to make sure we're using the correct words, like we should be focused on using socializing, volunteering. These are words that non-Rotarians have a good understanding and feeling for. Um, this isn't, below that we've got, again, pictures of scenery, random, doesn't tell anything about Rotary. Um, the news. It says, meeting was started by Frank, singing national anthem, parade of board members commenced, lunch was served, we had roast chicken, we had started to find people. What kind of impression is that giving to, about Rotary? As a non-Rotarian, I've come to this website to find information and I'm thinking, well, they really love lunch because lunch is mentioned a lot. Why is lunch mentioned more than the volunteer events you do, than the projects you do? Um, on the right-hand side, we've got the old Rotary wheel. Um, I think this perfectly exemplifies what I was saying earlier, where you can't really see the Rotary International that clearly in the will. Um, and on the left, we have an old theme banner. So overall, this website doesn't give a great first impression. And we really need to work on making a few changes that will really help boost our club's first impression. So let's look at our next example. So here we have a website from a club in our district, the Rotary Club of Lakewood. Now, Instantly, we see the Rotary logo, we see the club name. One thing I didn't mention on the one before was there's no club name. Um, and we see at the top, we see in the menu about our meetings, what is Rotary, get involved, contact us. Now these are all sections, if I'm coming with these kind of questions, I can easily click and find the answers to my questions. We have a really fantastic image in the banner. I hope you can really see the importance of a strong image that tells a story as opposed to just scenery. You know, you're telling a story just in an image here. Um, and they have a really clean, uncluttered look. At the bottom is a join now button. Um, it's really just a really simple but effective approach um, to kind of sell Rotary on that first impression through your website. So I really want to focus in on um, the how to um, be a member, how to apply to be a member section on your website. Um, most websites in our district don't have anywhere on their website for people to join their club. Your website is such a key resource for recruiting members. I've seen membership forms hidden at the bottom of a homepage under a random name. Um, I've seen um, I've seen everything and some clubs, like I said, don't even have a way to contact them to ask the questions about joining. You're really missing a key way to attract members. You should really make it easy for potential members to find the information about how to get involved and it should look professional. If someone's got to struggle to find a way to get any information about how to join your club, chances are they probably aren't going to bother and we don't want to be in that situation. I've got a few examples now of kind of key things you should have on your website to help um, recruit members and make them feel comfortable about applying. So examples here, on the top menu, they've got a really clear join us button that you can click to find the information. They have really clear instructions on how to apply. So they kind of lay out the process. They say, uh, message us and then, um, <clears throat> and then we'll email you and then we'll be in touch. Um, a clear point of contact. And they also show other membership types like corporate uh, membership. If you have these, you really should be showcasing them. People aren't going to ask you if they don't know you have them. So really you should be, if you have membership types, showcase them. Um, and then in these examples, if one of your requirements is um, 
still to get people to attend a meeting, which is fine. Why not prepare that potential member for what to expect? Now, I know when I first started going to Rotary meetings, it was very foreign to me, uncomfortable. Um, so just explain to them what's going to happen at the meeting, where to find your actual meeting room. Just putting location sometimes doesn't help. Whereabouts in the building are you? How long is the meeting? Will there be a speaker? What to expect? Prepare them, make them feel comfortable. And again, like I said before, lay out the process in a really clear way. And also try and have an online application form so people can do it all online. And then finally, be really upfront and transparent. We're not a secret society. Um, really outline the responsibilities of being a member, what it takes to be a Rotarian. We want to make sure we get members who are going to stick around. And by having explaining what the responsibility is up front, I think it will really help us to get the right members. Um, and also be upfront about the membership fees. It's not a secret. Tell people how much it costs to be a Rotarian. Um, people want this information. Um, don't make just make it available for them to see on your website. I don't think it's anything to be ashamed about. I think it's something to be proud about that you um, pay towards this organization that really makes a difference in the world. So finally, just a few um, key um, things to change on your website. So make sure you're using the right Rotary brand logo. Have a really inviting cover photo. I love this one in the example. It's, it's a more of a social focused photo, but you, they're really clever because look, they're showing the diversity of their membership. They're showing people could bring kids. They're showing they have members of all ages, genders, nationalities. Like they really do a great job in this one photo. Um, have a unique club URL. Don't use portal.clubrunner.ca slash I know, 45321. Um, <laughs> this isn't very user friendly. It's not easy to remember. It doesn't look good on promotional materials. Make sure you get your own club one. So this club is beauforrotaryclub.com.au. Make try and get your own club URL. Make it clear how to join your club. Have a contact us page. Easy to find meeting information. Um, easy to find information about your club and try and make it clutter free and modern looking and you can make these changes that quite simply as I said earlier I do have tons of information and a guide on how to make this and I will make sure I send it out to all of you after the presentation. I want to mention that now that we're having online meetings it's um, important that we still make sure showcase we're meeting and be present and available and provide clear instructions on how to join. I looked at lots of clubs websites recently and only a few really had information on how to join them. I've got one example to show you. It's really simple. It's just here. So all you need to do is just have a simple um, bit of text on the front of your homepage just saying join us at our meetings you're very welcome email us for a zoom invite just make sure you're present available and still inviting people to your meetings so while we're in this phase where we're meeting regularly online it's important that you keep your online meeting on brand so just like you would in your in-person meetings and you can accomplish this by having a greeter greet people either verbally or through the chat when they enter the meeting uh, encourage new people to introduce themselves, explain any rituals or practices that your club has started or carry over to your online meetings, and make sure to brand your meetings and presentations with the Rotary logo and use the correct Rotary logo as Katie pointed out. It's also important while we're all spending more time online that we use branding to take action. Uh, with no meals and no venue costs, this is a perfect time to dedicate funds to budget for membership and public image that push that uh, has been uh, mentioned a few times in the comments. Creating targeted ad campaigns on social media, radio, mobile apps, and other online venues like online news sites will continue to keep your club top of mind and help to draw followers to your social media and visitors to your website. So these people are your potential new members, new volunteers, and new donors to your club. And there are lots of great online materials that are available to download as well as a number of district zone and RI trainings and membership and public image that you can view right now. Uh, that includes our own District 5020 YouTube channel uh, where there's a number of videos on both public image and membership topics. And if you have any questions about public image or membership, 
Your brand new district chairs will be Caleb Sommerfeld and Marilyn Hoppen, and you can reach out to them for any membership or PI questions in the future. So uh, this is time again for more Q&A. Katie, it uh, looks like Rick Johnson has his hand up. Okay, I will. Rick, I think you are unmuted, so you can talk. Oh, hi. Actually, I was uh, uh, going to ask a question about the old logo. We have a number of uh, our logos. I'm in Campbell River, by the way, and, and some of them are on granite monuments, and they're the old logo, and we're looking at refurbishing them. So it's a little difficult to sort of bring it up to date. You know, they're embossed, of course, so I'm just wondering if you have any guidance on that. Honestly, it just has to be done. Um, I know it's it's tough, but if we can, the community signs are probably the hardest things to change. And I really appreciate your club is um, looking into changing them. Um, I just say do the best you can to change them. I'm sorry, I don't have <laughs> more help or information. No problem. Some of them are getting a little weathered, so uh, we're looking at repainting. And, and... But it's doing you a favour, right? <laughs> no. Okay, thanks. Thank you very much. Okay, I have a question in the chat we'll go to now. Um, questions about social media. How do you get non-members on social media when it aren't your friend group? So it's asking how do you push your Facebook posts out to reach more people? And the key to that is creating good content and then getting people to like, comment or share the post. And by having your friends and followers of your page like, comment or share, in turn, people who are their friends will probably see that they have liked, commented and shared, and then so on. So you've really got to create a post that gets attention and interaction. And that will really help you um, reach out to more people. And you can also ask your club members, hey, can everyone go to our Facebook page and share this post? ask them like there's no reason why not and that's a really great way to push important posts out katie there is one more question that went back a ways uh it asks how do you get the proper quality and size of images that can be used without blurring uh is there a special recommended size etc they're having trouble uh their photos are showing up blurry in all their presentation materials right so you need to make sure your photos you use are the right resolutions. Um, so if you're taking photos for your um, events, make sure you take it on a really good um, iPhone that's got a good camera or a really good um, regular camera. If you're struggling for pictures of your club, and I know a lot of people do, if you go to the Rotary Brand Center, um, Rotary has a load of uh, stock free images you can download and use. I use them all the time. They're really amazing. And you can also go to a website like unsplash.com and unsplash.com again has loads of stock free photos you can use for sure. Most of the images you've seen on this presentation were taken from unsplash. You just search for a relevant thing like I did social media and then pictures will come up that you can use. So there are resources out there. All right, uh, Brian, did you ask a question? Uh, it looks like, um... It, it's a lot of work. It seems like a lot of work if somebody is, for example, director of public image uh, to implement a lot of that. But a lot seems to overlap uh, with uh, membership, like director of membership. Do you, do you see that really that there's an overlap there and that it should be kind of the work should be shared between the... They should work together. Um, me and Corey have worked very closely together while we've both been chairs and it's really been beneficial, I think, um, to everyone. Um, public image should, um, I believe that they should, yeah, they should work very closely together. There's no reason to have them separated, I believe. Right. They go hand in hand. Absolutely, absolutely. And the, the purpose of public image in our clubs is to, uh, engage our members, uh, increase our membership, uh, and to uh, help support our foundation giving. So, uh, you know, and champion the good works that we do. So all those really work together. Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, Dan Whedon looks like he has his hand up. Uh, one of the things that I think that we as Rotarians uh, can do a better job of individually is to help brand our clubs and, and Rotary. And very early in your presentation, you showed a slide of a gentleman who was a Rotarian. He said, I'm a father, I'm a Rotarian, I'm a father, I'm a hunger fighter, 
all of these. I found that to be really a cool uh, personal branding for Rotary and for his club. We're all in the community. We're in the business community. We're in other nonprofits. And I'm wondering how much you've seen of individual Rotarians using the power of their own brand to help brand their own clubs. And do you have any example, other examples that you can share like that gentleman had? Yeah, I, uh, I don't have it in this presentation, but in other presentations that we've given and you can find on our YouTube channel, uh, one in particular is creating a branded uh, membership plan and it includes all kinds of examples. Uh, but there was a, a Rotary Club in the Midwest uh, that uh, put up digital billboards all across their community and they basically used some of their more prominent members that had uh, public standing on those digital billboards to say I'm a Rotarian and this is what I believe in uh, and it was very effective of them to let people know uh, that in their community not only uh, did Rotary have values but important people in the community were Rotarians so mm -hmm. and it also really makes great um, online images so that'd be really great as a website banner or a facebook cover photo because like you said they are really powerful so susie has her hand up susie moscovich thank you my question was back to a gentleman called ken and we were talking about is there any kind of survey that district has done as far as our brand image in our communities and i'm just wondering if you guys at public image could put together like even a short, a kind of survey. I mean, you guys would have the expertise through Survey Monkey or something that we could then as a club use in our, our clubs, for example, to send out to different um, uh, groups that we have or community groups. I'm just thinking that we could send out, I just can't think right off the bat because I've had this question for so long and I lost it. Um, but something that we could send out then that we would realize Oh, well, this is what our community thinks of us, or maybe we should put more emphasis on this, or, you know, that kind of a thing. If you guys at headquarters uh, could put together something, so because then we'd all be on the same page. Do you know what? We could put one together as a particular club, but I think it would be, I would think it would be better coming from district, so it's kind of all on the same path. Do you know what I mean? That kind of a thing. That's just my suggestion. Thank you. Yeah, that's a really good idea. Maybe something that we can work on as a district. I think that would help because it would help us as a club to say, oh my God, does our community know about us? Does we, does the, Do they know that we do good works or it, do they think we're all international or, you know, you guys yeah. could, could put it together because you've got all the information for the district. Mm -hmm. okay. So I Thank think that would be very helpful. Thank you, Susie. Hey, Katie, uh, we had John Mund had his hand up for quite some time. John, oh, did you have a question? I'm the managing artistic director for a nonprofit theater in Lakewood, Washington. And one of the biggest things we did was change our branding, update our branding to, to new and accessible and quick logos like the one that's here. Um, our, our Rotary is also doing the same thing for Clover Park Rotary through Dave Hall's efforts. Um, the big link that I'm missing in all of this is uh, the biggest presence for, especially for youth, is Instagram. I'm not seeing much of a push into Instagram uh, for instance, I'm looking at the Rotary 5020 site, and it currently has uh, 286 people as followers. Um, we're lucky. This is something we've been building really hard and working really hard on over the last year, so we're already up to 1,000 followers. Um, it seems to be primarily where our youth have headed. And I'm wondering if there's any graphics. If you look at the pictures underneath, for instance, there are all of our lovely 5020 pictures but they're all uh, longer width pictures that look great on the top of Facebook. But Instagram is a world that's an image that's this big. Hey, John, I'm going to jump in here. I'm going to jump in here and give a plug for Katie. Katie has an inter Instagram presentation today. It's one of the last sessions in session five. And so that's why we haven't covered this in detail, because there's a whole presentation on Instagram. Way to go, Katie. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I will just say quickly, John, that um, the Instagram for our district is something we're working on. Um, I know it's not perfect, but um, I really hope the presentation later will help push clubs into being more visual on Instagram. And I agree with everything you said about the importance of it. Wasn't slamming at all. No, no not at all. It's totally valid. 
<laughs> but um, the other thing that we've had a quick presence on, and it doesn't take long to do it, we've especially done it during this latest COVID-19 crisis, mm -hmm. is the face of your rotary, whether it's your president or the person that's most comfortable on camera, just doing a weekly message um, mm -hmm. on your YouTube channel or your Facebook channel or your Instagram, just reaching out, uh, letting folks know that, that they are missed and they are loved and um, we want to have them back home. So that's another quick an easy thing for anybody to do that has one of these things in their home. So that is our time. I want to thank uh, my co-presenter Katie Cord for helping us out today. Uh, give her a round of applause and a digital clap. I want to thank all 198 of you for attending. Uh, enjoy the rest of the sessions and I hope to see you later at the uh, Aloha celebration.